conversation with the spokesperson of the ANC Women's League, Mam Togozile Klasa. Now, uh, Mam Klasa, while we were talking about the issue of policy, there was an article um, that we can't ignore that was in the City Press over the weekend that was looking at the ANC's sexual harassment policy, and that's a party that, of course, that you come from. And it says that this, this, this policy does not sufficiently protect women. And one of the things that it says is that um, this is, 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 is a document that doesn't appear appear to have consulted with the women within the party when it was drafted. Were you consulted as the NC Women's League? Well, uh, at the moment, the step that has been taken was more of within the institution where, you know, you have full-time employees and therefore they developed a sexual harassment policy, which you would remember after the incidents uh, mm. that were reported uh, of the spokesperson, yes. and so the ANC had to, uh, to come up. So consultations were made with uh, the full-time uh, kind of staff of the ANC. But as a structure, no. So uh, when it then got to be presented before the National Executive Committee of the ANC, of which I'm also a member, we, we said, yes, it's a positive step that the ANC has to, to, to lead. You cannot have uh, incidents of that nature from a party that is supposed to lead by example. So it's, it's a good step, but we need an overarching policy of the ANC on sexual harassment. That would then talk to the one million members of the ANC, how they have to behave in structures, because those structures they start from branch level, they start from community level. That is where we have to teach our young people as they join the organization with its components, integral components, with its alliance partners, so that it continues as a whole to be a leader of society by showing what the right way is. So that is where it is, which is then further you know, opening up so that even if you happen not necessarily to be in the leadership of the structure, if you belong to the ANC and do such things, the ANC can be able to discipline you within its structures if you uh, put in its name in disrespect. And, disrespect. And, 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 and are you not concerned then that as a critical voice within this movement, at the inception, you were not considered. You only had to hear about this when it got to that particular level. And this is one of those issues that really, really is, is, is quite, you know, a hot political potato within the party. Our issue has been the fact that we did not have the policy. And therefore, uh, we had to impress upon to make sure there is the policy, and which is what is being consulted mm. as we speak. Mm. Took time. Uh, but uh, better late than never. So there is that because we continuously assess to what extent and how are we positioning ourselves uh, as leader of society. Are we doing what needs to be done? Are these not members uh, of the very society that we say we are leading if we cannot have guidelines of how then we lead that? So it, for us, uh, we're much uh, comfortable, but we, uh, we as the ANC Women's League, we already had, as part of our conference resolutions, tackled these matters. We have moved, even in terms of our Lukhutla, the matters have been there, because we, we, we believe, even if you have to talk issues of economy, you have to talk uh, you know, social issues, you cannot leave out, because women, are also a very critical part in terms of also uh, the strength of the country, strength of the no, no organization can boast uh, to have, you know, great people and great leaders ignoring women. And I want us to just hear what some on social media are saying. Carmen, you're standing by. Indeed, thank you so much, Bongi. Well, let's start by taking a look at um, the social media responses we have been getting. Of course, we asked a question earlier on. Let's take a look now on Twitter. Nolita here saying, stay away from what? How many marches that conducted to this date and there's no change with women? I'm tired of speeches, plans, but no action. Now they're changing their tunes to stay away. So not very positive coming in there. And then... 
team out by here saying that doesn't make any difference because the situation didn't start today. It happened under their own um, homes for so many years without seeking action from them. Politicians are just attention seekers. They just pose as if they're about bringing solutions. So very strong view there on politicians as a whole. Lange here from Josini saying um, the NC Women's League proposal is just a waste of time. The key points will be unity to MPs to change as the so-called good constitution to improve a firm justice system. So of course, Bongi, that's what people are saying. For now, it's back to you. Thank you so much, Carmen. Those are views of, 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 of some of those that, um, you know, we, we have been asking to speak to us on social media. And before we, we continue there, one of them says that this is a waste of time. There isn't anything that is different that is happening. Your reflections on that? Well, uh, you know, um, interestingly, at times you'll find that, um, yeah, although I didn't happen to get uh, who the identities are, mm. you know, uh, issues of women, they would always uh, be dragged down by other women. That's the unfortunate part. You know, uh, besides, besides uh, 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 the comments that we have uh, throughout the day, uh, we also had received some of the comments. One of, one, one, one of the comments was saying, you know, this is, uh, you know, useless. But critical uh, for us, the importance of this uh, uh, campaign is to really build on the voice of women and use the power that women have. Because women in their work, in their homes, in every you know, facet of life, in the private sector, in companies, wherever they are, they are mistreated, they are undermined. So you know, building this voice and having a united a, a voice of women so that women, women are able to stand for themselves because they are so uh, individuals in boardrooms full of men. S women from outside, if uh, you know, women participate from all walks of life, that you are making the entire society to respect because those women would be supported by women who happen to be outside. So critical for us is a movement towards ensuring that we have, you know, all our levers jacked up to protect women. And before I, I, I let you go, we're almost out of time, but um, you know this article on the sexual harassment policy, which is really concerning, it says that um, Section 18 um, has really been red flagged, and it's, it's a section that excludes certain behaviors. And it says that they, these behaviors don't constitute sexual harassment. They include compliments, flirtatious banter, forms of greeting that are acceptable according to organizational culture and behavior, as well as jokes not intended to be harmful. It can't be in a sexual harassment policy. This surely can't be in a sexual harassment policy because it really takes us back, doesn't it? Well, for us, uh, what we have uh, identified, even uh, uh, we are happy with the outcomes of the Lohutla of Parliament, we've identified exactly, even in terms of the legislation, uh, the gaps. So, which means in terms of the policy, policy guides in terms of what needs to, 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 to get into legislation. So already, it's not only when it comes to the sexual harassment policy, but in terms of the policies that gave rise to the current legislation that is not talking to what is happening. And we are even saying, even at schools, the curriculum itself, your life orientation must be able to to encompass gender-based violence. It must also be able to encompass issues of equality uh, so that young people at that early age, you know, are brought up to understand how they have to relate to each other, the, 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 the gender stereotypes uh, that are there so that you can be able to track them at an early age. And when you, you come up, you get to ensure that, you know, policies within those institutions, be it private schools or institutions and all of those, they are part of what uh, emanates from the, the national policies. And just before I let you go in 30 seconds, does the ANC's policy protect the perpetrators more than the victim? It's not ANC policies. I mean, it the is sexual harassment the, the, versus this draft. The, 
Well, it is inform informed uh, coming from the constitution. That is where we even are saying as, as South African women, let's get back into the constitution where the Bill of Rights uh, you know, makes us to respect human rights. We respect the constitution. We also advocate that constitution be respected. But we need to get back because circumstances that brought us to where today the Bill of Rights mm. we have were different. They moved from another era. It's another era now. We need to get back. We must not be afraid to talk about death penalty. Neither should we be afraid to talk about chemical castration because that's the debate we are putting onto the table so that if we can deal with them, change their mindset, uh, those parts of their bodies that are problematic, they must be removed from Is themselves. that what you're calling for? We're calling for that debate. Just a debate or calling for chemical castration and death? We're calling for a debate because we, need, we still need to get to, can, to, to understand further to what extent in the countries that have uh, instituted it, it has either uh, assisted to, to keep the sketch. Okay, unfortunately, that's all we have time for this evening. Mam Kasa, thank you so much. I wish we had more time to talk about this issue because it is one of those burning issues and it's not going to you know, stop being a, an, an issue that um, South Africa is talking about, particularly with all the numbers of women that we have been seeing either going missing and there's also children as well. And this, of course, continues to rage on social media and continue to send us those views because we are talking gender-based violence at 11 o'clock. But after the news headlines we are going to be looking at the role of the church when it comes to ending the xenophobic attacks that we have been seeing and stay with us after the break as we continue with your view